gather in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the earth and all creatures. The Lord be with you. And also with you. To those of you at home, apologies that we are not live, uh, but this service will have been uploaded hopefully sometime this afternoon. Um, welcome to everyone here. Those at home, again, I'm sorry you can't see, but we've got quite a full church this morning, which is just lovely. Welcome to our Harvest Festival, and a special welcome to the first and second Stevenage Rainbows as we receive your flags for the duration of this service. Thank you very much. Don't let me forget at the end. You've got to come back and come back to me again at the end. Thank you. Very warm welcome to first and second Stevenage Rainbows. You can go back to your seats. And also, um, we've got representation of the fifth Stevenage Rainbows, the Christ the King Division, because they've done the decorations on the pew ends for us. Uh, so all of our rainbows for the whole parish are represented. <coughs> Um, any children, whether you're a rainbow or not, do make sure you get a little, a, a little, big, big green ribbon um, available to wave. If there's some that have come in at the back and don't have a green ribbon, somebody will manage to get you one. I don't know where the stash of them is. But children, can I invite you to wave those ribbons during our songs, if it feels appropriate, and you might also listen through the whole service for whenever I use, or anybody uses the word harvest or creation. And you might like just to give, I haven't got a ribbon myself, or I would demonstrate, but just a little twiddle when you hear the word harvest. But, but is there a spare one? Is there a spare one? They've all been used. Okay, well I see a couple who still have them all wound up. And, and it, you should unwind them so that the ribbon trails behind the stick. Just unwind the whole ribbon off the stick and then you can do a big swoop with it whenever we say the words harvest or creation. Lots of you I know have brought harvest gifts. Quite a number are here at the altar already. If you'd like to bring them forward during a hymn, I will invite you to do that during our second hymn, if there's any harvest gifts left, to bring those forward during our second hymn. Churches worldwide have a theme for harvest this year, which is listen to the voice of creation. And so our first hymn, we're inviting all the other creatures, all the other cre things that have been created by God to sing praise to God. And so as we sing, you might like to think, what do these creatures say? as they praise God. It's number nine in the green hymn books. Number nine, all creatures of our God and King, we're inviting them all to sing praise to God with us. Hymn number nine.
Sit or kneel. God our creator, God our creator is revealed in creation, but are we listening? The earth is crying out to us, but are we listening? Vulnerable and less privileged people groan under the weight of their suffering, but are we listening? Let's all be quiet for a moment, asking God to forgive us and help us to listen. And in this section of the service, we're not going to wave our ribbons. We're just going to be quiet and ask God to forgive us and help us to listen. God of creation, you created land and trees, animals and birds and insects. We are destroying the forests through logging, through poison, silencing the birds and all who live in the forests. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You created the wonders of the ocean, fish, quails and coral reefs. Our greenhouse gas emissions overheat the oceans, and we are drowning our seas in plastic, silencing the whales and all who live on or near the waters. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You created Mother Earth, our common home who sustains us. Help us to listen, to care, to do the right things, and help us to convince those with power to listen and care as well. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receiving forgiveness, we stand as we're able and we sing glory to God and peace for all his people. And this has a refrain, so children, even if you can't read the words three times, we're going to sing, glory to God, glory to God, peace from the highest heavens, sing glory to God. <laughs> of the sea 
and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish, respect, and listen to this planet and all its peoples through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? Usually in our services at this time, if, if I'm here, uh, which I'm not every week, but most weeks, then I invite children and their caregivers who do not feel up to sitting through a sermon to go into the next room and we do a little thing together. If I'm preaching, then we do have to sit through the sermon, but, but we have a little bit of time together just to sort of stretch our legs and tell a Bible story together through our bodies or something. We're not gonna do that this morning because I hope I've got a lot for children to be doing during the service. But we would love to have you back. We've, got, we've used up all our green ribbons, I tell people at home. So that means there's at least a dozen, I can't remember how many green ribbons I got, but the, there's the, the dotting through the congregation during the glory to God, um, you can see them through. And we'd love to have you here every week. If you can come, anytime you can come, do. And like I say, most Sundays, there's a little something for children to go out and do together. We're going to hear a Bible reading about bringing a basket of your harvest to the altar of God. And after that Bible reading, if there's any harvest gifts left in the congregation, then we're going to sing a hymn, and I invite you to bring those forward during the hymn. But first we're going to listen to the Bible reading about a basket of food at the harvest coming to the altar. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess it, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that your Lord is giving, that, your, that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at the time, and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come against the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and where he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labour on us, we cried to the Lord the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and, and gave us this land a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Later, when we come to what we call our offertory hymn, the rainbows are going to bring up samples of the different kinds of gifts that we're presenting at the harvest. But right now, anybody else, if you have harvest gifts that you haven't brought forward, do please bring them up during this hymn. We're going to sing number 138. For the fruits of his creation, one, three, eight.
according to John. Glory to you, our Lord. So for this, because this is a story about Jesus, that everybody who's able stands up while we listen to show respect. When they found Jesus on the other side of the sea, the crowd said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, when did you come here? And Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs and miracles, but because you ate bread until you were full. Do not work for food that goes bad and perishes. Work for food that lasts forever to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. So the people said to Jesus, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, The work of God is that you believe in him who he has sent, which meant himself, Jesus. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us? What miracle so that we may believe in you? What work are you performing? They said, our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written in the Bible. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the earth. They said to him, sir, Give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Holy Spirit, take my words and speak to each of us according to our need. Please be seated. I wonder if you can think back to a time when you were captivated by nature. Captivated is when you can't help but be completely focused on something. I'm often captivated by my iPhone. But I wonder if you can think of a time when you were captivated by nature, when your attention was 100% on nature. Maybe it was a warm day and you were lying in the grass feeling the heat of the sun on your face. Or maybe you were watching clouds as they moved across the sky. Maybe it was a rainy day when you were just watching the raindrops roll down the window and trying to guess which one would get to the bottom first. 
When was the last time you stopped to watch the ants march around? Or listen to bird song? Or feel the texture of tree bark? Smell the roses? Or pick and eat a brambleberry? The theme of this year's listen, uh, season of creation is listen to the voice of creation. It doesn't just mean listening to bird song, but it means all kinds of paying attention, and especially paying attention to problems and complaints and cries for help. St. Augustine said, creation is the divine page you must listen to. It's a book of the universe that you must observe. And one of the poems in our Bible says, the skies have no speech, they use no words, no sound comes out of them, and yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Hearing that voice of creation that has no speech and no words, is a rare kind of listening, and I think often children find it easier than grown-ups. So you might have to help your grown-up's children to listen and pay attention to the voice of creation. That poem in the Bible says, Scripture perfectly revives the soul, makes the simple wise, rejoices the heart, and enlightens the eyes. That's the books of our Bible. But the book of the Bible, the books of the Bible, are meant to be read side by side with the book of creation. During the season of creation, our prayer and action can help us listen for the voices that have been silenced. The individuals, communities, species, and ecosystems that have been lost, and those whose livelihoods are threatened by habitat loss and climate change. In prayer, we center the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. We listen to the voice of our co-creatures, co creatures like us. We perceive truth and goodness and beauty and become more aware of the Trinity in whom creation lives and moves and has its being. The logo this year is the burning bush, the symbol of creation, the season of creation 2022. Today, the prevalence of unnatural fires are a sign of the devastating effects that climate change has had on the most vulnerable of our planet. Creation cries out as forests crackle, animals flee, and people are forced to migrate. On the contrary, the fire they called to Moses as he tended the flock on Mount Horeb, did not destroy, it did not consume the bush. This was the flame of the Spirit that revealed God's life-sustaining presence. This holy fire affirmed that God heard the cries of all who suffered and promised to be with us as we followed faithfully to deliverance from injustice. And as you came into church, you will have passed, sorry for those of you at home, you will have passed a sort of representation of reminding us of the burning bush. And we've got one also, I think, on that windowsill over there. It's a very interesting story, that story from Exodus. At the beginning of Exodus, it's not really clear that the people have remembered God. It's been some generations, and it's there's nothing really... It's not clear whether they're praying. I think they're just groaning under the oppression. They're just groaning. And later on, they read back, I need to be careful, get two microphones close to, close to each other. Later on, when they remembered, they said, we cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. That's what they thought later, but at the time, probably they were just groaning. And yet, that cry, even if it wasn't a prayer, that cry was heard by God. And God heard it as a cry for help. 
And so today we're invited to notice creation's groaning and crying, to notice it, to listen and to hear, and to treat it as a cry for help. So as you're able, we're going to stand and declare the faith of the church in the words of the creed. This is lots and lots and lots of words, but do listen for when we say we believe in the Father, and then we're going to say we believe in the only Son of God, and then right towards the end, we're gonna say we believe in the Holy Spirit. So see if you can listen for those words as we say this. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated? My voice started going a little funny there, so I've put a cough sweet in my mouth. I shall try to talk around it and make a few announcements. You have a slip in your, well, a big sheet in your bulletins, which is advance notice of our Christmas fair. And we also have advance notice of our service of all souls, where we remember those who have died. And there's a list at the back of church, underneath these glorious posters that say Holy Trinity Church since 1862. Beneath that, there's a little shelf or table with a sign-up list on it. And if there's any of your loved ones who have died that you'd like to be remembered at our All Souls service, then do put their names on that list and we will read them out prayerfully during that service, remembering them and giving thanks. Speaking of giving thanks, anybody who was involved in yesterday's setting up of beautiful decorations all around our church and or bringing or offering teas and coffees. Could you just stand up where you are? Anybody who made a decoration or served coffee or helped in any way because that was a really fantastic glorious day and we are still appreciating the decorations now because really what they were done for is today's harvest festival so thank you every single one of you very much if you can take a seat and we're also thanking uh letchmore infants and woolamook juniors and two different toddler clubs whose names I have forgotten, but they're there, and the fifth Stevenage Rainbows. To, so we're thanking them as well. Is Elaine here? She is, and me here. Speaking of thanks, are you willing to come up? Lee's already up, but you've got to stand up. Lee and Elaine.
Lay have served as our church wardens for several years. Lay was already church warden when I arrived, and that's the worst possible time to be a church warden is when there's no vicar in the parish, um, and then a whole lot of extra responsibility falls on you. Um, and he was serving on his own for quite some time. And then fortunately, Elaine came and said that she would also be church warden. And that's really what you want is for a church to have two church wardens for a parish to have. Um, we are very, very grateful for their service over these years. Um, now that I don't have church wardens, if any of you decide you might like to be church warden, do uh, let us know. It's quite a lot of work, but Lee and Elaine can talk to you about it. And the idea, ideally, is that you're able actually to delegate quite a bit of that work to other people. In the absence of church wardens, I've not got you your restaurant gift certificates, which are supposed to be in these envelopes. So what you have got is cards that have been signed by lots and lots of people, and what will be coming soon is some restaurant gift tokens to you. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, but we are very grateful for all that you've done. And can we please give them a big clap? Um, in your sheets, so do take them away, take them home, and have a look at them. Right now, I'm going to invite uh, Glynis to come lead us in our prayers of intercession. This is where we ask God for things. Um, you might like, if you've got a children's worship leaflet, you might like simply to draw a picture of something that you are asking God for or praying about while we listen to Glynis and pray ourselves. The response to Lord of all life is hear our prayer. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. God, the beginning and the end of all things, in your providence and care you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. Lord, we praise you for the harvest of talents in this church, for buildings well maintained, for flower arrangements and music, for responsible stewardship, for charities supported, we praise you for the harvest of fellowship, for friends made and support given, for people with whom to love and with whom to weep. We praise you for the harvest of prayer in this place, for commitment deepened, for discipleship taken up, for the cross carried and the burdens borne. We pray for Noah who will be baptised in this church today. And at this harvest time we pray for agricultural chaplains and rural churches. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. Lord, we praise you for the harvest of the fields, hedgerows, gardens and allotments. For all involved in agricultural research who face the challenge to produce more food for a growing world without harming the environment. Touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your, wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Pakistan and all affected by recent hurricanes. We pray for the hungry and the homeless, the struggling and the oppressed, for those without power to negotiate or bargain, for all whose work goes unrewarded, whose produce is undervalued, for all who feel unwanted, 
believing their skills are no longer needed. Lord of all life, Lord. we pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospitals and nursing homes, and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them. We hold before you those who have asked for our prayers. For Larry, Claire Day, Malcolm Day and Cheryl Day, Sam, Rebecca and Evelyn, John, John Carroll, Daniel Freilich, Agnes, Nancy, Terence, Pauline and Teresa, Val P.S., Gordon McCray, Jenny Leinster, Daryl Warwick, Angela Warble, Carol, Carol and Nick, Catherine Smith, Beth, Brendan, Tony Smith, Dave, Sue Sandry, Walter, John, Romeo, Kathy Swain, and Viv Hamilton. Lord of all life, we are. We remember those who have died, whom we entrust to your eternal love in the hope of resurrection to new life. We pray for those who have died recently, including Lisa Hearn and Tony Brown, and for those whose years mind falls at this time, including Mary Weston, Frank Stiles, Arthur Hale, John Batterby, Eileen Martin, and Ernest Meredith. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. In a few moments of silence, we offer our own prayers to God our Father. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite all of you to stand for the peace as you're able. <laughs> peace with yourself. Peace with creation, peace with one another. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. We're going to sing, I've got peace like a river, and we think about God's peace coming to us, and then we're going to turn around and wave to one another, singing, I've got love like the ocean, loving one another and offering them peace. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean. of the harvest, gifts that God has created and his son and reign have nurtured, and let us bring forward the gifts that we have given, both for this parish and for those in need. Let us give thanks. Thanks be to God. Let's have everybody sit down who can't... Uh, in the hope, if you're a child at the back, then do go ahead and stand up. But most of us sit down for a minute so we can watch this happen. If 
one of you is ready, come on up. Just as you get ready, come on up. That's it. So one at a time, you tell me what you've brought. What's on your list? Thank you. Could you put your things there in front of the altar? And you, you don't need to read out that bit, just the I bring forward. Let's do it this way. I'm going to read this bit and you tell me what you've got. She brings forward the harvest of the cornfields, the oats and the wheat and the rye and the barley. And what have you got in your hands? And I've got porridge and um, pasta. Thank you. Let us give thanks. Thanks be to God. I bring forward the harvest of fruits to speed and the things and sugar be Let us give thanks. Thanks be to God. I bring forward the harvest of vegetables, bees, sweet corn and beans. Let us give thanks. Thanks be to God. I give thanks for the harvest of flowers. The finest blooms from field and garden, and recognize the skill of everyone who has decorated our church. Let us give thanks. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. We have two collections today one for the parish and one for the bishop's appeal, the harvest appeal. I bring forward the gifts of money to support the work of this parish and our mission. Let us give thanks. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. I bring forward the grain and the grain, for our Saviour took bread and wine to feed us with his body and his blood. Give, given and shed for the life of the world. Let us feed on him by faith with thanksgiving. Let us give thanks. Thanks, thanks be to God. God for all the many good gifts of harvest. Let us give thanks. Thanks be to God. Now, before we ask the three of you to go back, I'm going to have you do one more job, and that's to give out some bells. I'm afraid we don't have enough bells for every child because we've got a wonderful number of children today. Lovely, fantastic. But I'm going to invite some of you. You need to be quite responsible with your bells. We only ring them when Lee rings his bells. There's gonna be three times in the Eucharistic prayer that we're gonna ring the bells. Lee's gonna lead you, and when he rings a bell, then you ring yours too. And you might just listen along and think, I wonder why the bells are in the places where they are. Thank you. We're going to turn and sing hymn number 139, turning kind of from our own thanksgiving into prayer for listening for the cries of the rest of the world. So we're going to sing for the healing of the nations, number 139.
get to church in person, those of you watching at home and those who are housebound to whom communion is being taken. Uh, Glynis is taking the sacrament to Louis Richards, Paul to Guy Jenkins, Derek to Sybil and Valerie, and Pat to Joan Amos. So we think of those members of our congregation still worshiping with us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to give a long prayer of thanks and praise to God. Praise and thanks are yours, our creating God. From the communion of your love, your word went forth to create a symphony of life that sings your praise. By your holy wisdom we made earth to bring forth a diversity of creatures who praise you in their being. You called human beings to till and keep your garden, placing us into right relationships with each creature so that we could listen to their voices. But we closed our ears to them and to you. Now we hear creation crying out. Although we have turned away from our co-creatures and from you, the creator of us all, now we turn again to contemplate your creation, to listen for the voice of each creature declaring your glory. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. And so we join our voices with the wonders of creation, with the songs of praise of all your creatures, both in heaven and on earth, as we praise you, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor upon your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So now I invite everyone to sit or kneel. And let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And that will give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, 
us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love and creation and have shared in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and a willingness to listen to the voices of our fellow creatures to make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God. We thank, we thank you, you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and our bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. During our closing hymn, to, uh, the last verse of our closing hymn, but I have the rainbow flag bearers come up to collect their flags in the last verse of this hymn. We cannot have harvest without singing, we plow the fields and scatter. So it's number 534, 534. <laughs>
enjoy next door in the room just there, coffee, tea, squash and cake, do please stay, do come again, you're very welcome every Sunday. Tend the earth, listen to the voice of God's good creation and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.